your grace is sufficient to keep us, for your strength is made perfect when we're weak.
forever in the secret place of the most high. Shall I lay down the shadow of the Lord? I'll see the Lord on my every day, on my forever. My God, you will cover us with your face. When you will, you will hide. Your truth shall be all. Take me to the 
myself away.
Christ, we receive the body of our sister, is the donor for burial. Our sister is born in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Let us therefore be confident to God our Father that you may the company of the saints. Sister Hazel Donna and, and, and on our earthly people. No, no, son of God. We are united with those of God through Jesus Christ, Lord. Amen.
Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we live to the if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again that he might be be Lord both of the dead and the living. We brought nothing into the world and we take nothing out. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is our refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. In the midst of life, we are in death. From whom can we seek help? From you alone, O Lord, who by our sins are justly angered. Lord, you know the secrets of our hearts. Shut not your ears to our prayers, but spare us, O Lord. O worthy and eternal judge, do not let the pains of death turn us away from you at our last hour. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Kindly be seated, please. We've now come to the part of the service where we have the tributes. And I'm asking you, because we have a few tributes, please be ready and come forward when it is your turn. And also try to minimize the preface, the talking before you do your tribute. If you attribute your song, come forward and do your song. Thank you very much. So we begin first with the Jazzy D, then the JNF staff, followed by Alex Condal and Christopher Martin, then the Wesley Holiness Church, Anthony Richardson, the family tribute, and then the eulogy. Jazzy D, JNF staff, Alex Condell, Wesley Holiness, Church, Anthony Richardson, and then the family tribute. So we'll hear now from Jazzy D. If Jazzy D is not here, JNF staff, is JNF staff ready? On behalf of the JNF Laundry, Kitchen Staff, and CSSD, 
We are here to pay our tribute to the family members of Hazel Martin. Our tribute will be in song. Oh. 
the Wesley Holiness Church. Uh, they're here. After the Wesley Holiness Church, Anthony Richardson, and then the family tribute. My tribute, I would just like to say my deepest sympathy to the family who left to mourn, and I'll do my tribute in a mixed version, and I'll start by saying in song, singing song, sorry. And I'll do all the way my Savior leads me. <laughs> All the way my Savior leads me 
What have I to ask beside? Can I doubt His tender mercies? Who true life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divinest comfort. Here by faith in Him to dwell. For I know whatever befalls me, Jesus doeth all things well. For I know whatever befalls me, Jesus doeth all things well. I'll do my second piece in a poem and I would like to say it like this each the family might be very large and friends and other close ones you take your part and put where where I say I you let it be you in my rose garden of memories I see you standing there an angel in disguise who taught me how to care. I long to hear your voice for real Norfe and dreams. I am missing you so much these days, how empty my world seems. People say time heal all wounds, that someday the pain will subside. Grandma, I would say, I can tell you, I think that the master lied. The emptiness I am feeling now is strong and I am weak. These days go by without you, so dreary and so bleak. In my rose garden of memories, I know you'll always be, for though you're gone from this mortal world, in my heart you'll always be. And I'll finally sing, just stay closer, walk with thee, grant to Jesus this my plea.
I take it there won't be a family tribute? We will now have the eulogy then, delivered by Christopher Martin, the eulogy by Christopher Martin. Good afternoon, church. I would like to use this opportunity to say a very good thank you for you guys for coming out to supporting Valisha, Taji, and Kareem for sending home our beautiful sister to a better place. Like all of us, Hazel had her strength and her opportunities. A strong personality, and I, I'm sure every one of you guys know. A heart filled with love. Essentially, that was Hazel nature. But particularly, when it comes to Hazel children, Tajik, Valisha, and Kareem, Hazel love, love, love her kids. Hazel had a beautiful smile great personality and i remember a few stuff growing up with hazel when we were kids growing up in st kids i remember one time i came home to visit and i was sitting in the flamingo there with hazel and kareem i'm sorry teji came in crying and Taji said, Mommy, why your name hit me now? Why your name hit me? And he said, Move there, let me go for him. Move there, let me go for him. I said, Hazel, Taji didn't tell you who hit him yet. Who you going for? <laughs> Hazel, I can tell you, material things never get my sister. Hazel wasn't into Louis Vuitton and jewelry and all those fashion stuff. What I can tell you, one thing I know here is a love. My beautiful sister was money. <laughs> but don't laugh, don't laugh, because I'm going to ask every single one of you guys a question. If you do not like money, put up your hand. I thought so. Hazel was a special heart. I remember again, <laughs> I came to visit Hazel another time. And this time, Karim said, Hazel, Chris out there, you know. And I heard Hazel in the back. Hazel said, tell him don't move, I'm coming. And when Hazel came up front, the first thing Hazel did, shing it out. <laughs> shing it out, boy. I have to speak on behalf of Alicia. And I have a lot of respect for my niece. Because Valicia and Hazel shared a special kind of band, a mother and daughter band. Nobody at all could have get between Hazel and Valisha. Valisha shared something with me and I'm going to share it with you guys today. When Valisha got pregnant, she was, a, if I'm not mistaken, about 25 years old, first kid. Valisha was extremely scared to tell baby boy, her father. So Valisha told me, this is a job for Hazel. So Valisha now took Hazel down by baby boy. And they had a meeting. 
Valisha shaking, of course. He's walking, look at me, boy, and said, Valisha pregnant, eh? Valisha pregnant. And baby boy said, hey, 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 by, by, hey. Okay. That was it. So again, Hazel was very firm, very smart, loved her kids. I never had one issue with Hazel. But you guys would know, if you trouble Hazel first, she was going to talk to you in Spanish. And, and we all know that. No, I want to share a message from Hazel to every one of you guys. And it's all about life. It's all about life. Life is a beautiful thing. Life is a beautiful thing. I'm going to live it up. And I'm going to enjoy it. To the fullest but most importantly I'm going to give it to the father the man above look around us so many people are dying right now a lot of young people from COVID so many people are starving all over the world so what he is saying, now you guys here with each other, with me, with your family, your husband, your kids, enjoy it to the fullest. Thank you. Thank you very much to Mr. Martin and all those who gave their tributes. We will now stand to sing the opening hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
us pray. O oh God, whose mercies cannot be numbered, accept our prayers on behalf of your servant, Hazel Donna, and grant her an entrance into the land of light and joy in the fellowship of your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Holy Scripture, the Old Testament lesson from the book of Lamentations, chapter 3. Good afternoon, church. The scripture reading is taken from Lamentations 3, verses 22 to 26, then 31 to 33. It is of the Lord's mercy. See Okay. <laughs> okay, the steadfast love of the Lord <clears throat> never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. <clears throat> it is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord, for the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love, for he does not willingly afflict grief or grieve anyone. Okay, here in the scripture reading. Thanks to God. The appointed psalm is Psalm 23, and we will say the psalm responsively as displayed on the monitors. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. Make me to lie down in the pasture. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, the shadow of the easier. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Remain seated for the New Testament reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Oh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, the reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 50 through 58. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit corruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We all shall not sleep, but shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. But when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy victory? O death, where is thy sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore, behold, brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of, of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Here ends the word. We stand to sing the hymn, Just a Closer Walk With Thee.
seated. Let me first express to the family of our departed sister, Donna, express to her and family our deepest sympathies as you mourn the loss of Donna. And we want to encourage you to not to seek to handle things in your own way or in your own strength, but to draw closer to God so that he can walk with you daily. I also want to acknowledge the presence of our parliamentary representative, the Honorable Eugene Hamilton. And so I want to share with you this afternoon, sisters and brothers, some words of comfort and encouragement. And the text that kept on coming to my mind all day today was the, from the very first reading we heard from the book of Lamentations chapter 3 verse 22 and 23 says to us the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases his mercies never come to an end they are new every morning great is your faithfulness let us pray Heavenly Father, there is so little for us to say and do as we mourn the loss of our loved ones. Help us to put our trust in you and to take hold of your promises that in you we do not find death, but resurrection and eternal life. So I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts may be acceptable in thy sight. O God, who art our strength and our redeemer. Amen. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Great is thy faithfulness. Some years ago, as I drove to work, there was a bus in front of me, and, and, and at the back of the bus, there was a sign which you could not miss. And the sign that was displayed said, Why worry? God is in control. Why worry? God is in control. And yet so often we live in worry and fear. We worry about life. We worry about death. We worry about losing our jobs. We worry about having enough to support ourselves and our families. We worry about things that, has gone, that have gone. We worry about things that are happening. And we even worry about things that have not happened yet. 
But why worry? God is in control. And yes, even though we trust God and we know God is in control, it does not mean that we will never go through difficulties. It does mean that things won't bother us. But at the end of the day, we do what we can and we entrust the rest to God. Because God's mercy, God's steadfast love never ends. His mercies never, never end also. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. And yet, we still put our trust in other things and sometimes other people. The best human being can leave us whether because of travel, death, what have you. But there is a friend who sticketh closer than a brother. There is one who promised never to leave or forsake us. There is one whose mercies never end. There is one who indeed, when we look back at our life, in spite of challenges and grief and difficulties, we can indeed say, great is your faithfulness. One of my favorite songs goes something like this. All of my life, you have been faithful. All of my life, you have been good. With every breath, I will praise you. I will sing of the goodness of God. My friends, if you have noticed, I'm saying to you, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Family members, in spite of your grief and your pain, God is good. God is faithful. And so, in your time of bereavement, I am imploring you to put your trust in God. He will carry you through. He is the one who can provide the greatest comfort to you in this difficult time. He is the one who said, even if you walk to the valley of the shadow of death, his rod and his staff are going to comfort you. So if you don't do anything else, please put your trust in God and let him bring you through. The psalm says to us that God is our refuge and strength. And indeed God is. Because oftentimes when we look back at our lives and we see that we were encountering difficulties and we wondered, how did we make it? Think about those times when you felt like giving up, when you saw no hope, no reason to continue or to go on. And think about God's goodness that has carried you through. For those who put their trust in God, Weeping may endure for the night, but joy is sure to come in the morning. Joy is sure to come in the morning. Sister Denise sang so wonderfully earlier, hold on to Jesus and ride out your star. God promised to rescue us from difficult moments, but his rescue does not mean we won't encounter them, but that he will be there with us. So that these storms don't overpower us. These storms don't defeat us. But because of his great love, because of his faithfulness, he's there with us every step of the way, leading us to safety. I always marvel when I hear people say, since I put my trust in Jesus, all my troubles have gone away. Really? Is that true? Perhaps you serve a different Jesus than I serve. Because Jesus promised that in the world we will face tribulations. But we can be of good courage. We don't have to fear. Because he has overcome the world. And you know something as bad as we think we have it. As difficult as things seem to be. There's always at least one person who has it worse than us. Furthermore, 
Jesus would have gone through worse than we are going through for our sakes. Scripture says to us that greater love has no man than this, that a man should lay down his life for his friends. All this is part of God's great love for us. All this is part of God's faithfulness. And so in return, we must learn to love God and be faithful to him. Even and especially in difficult moments. Because he who promised never to leave us is forever faithful. And so we can trust him. Especially in those times when we can't handle, we, we don't think we have the strength. God has an endless supply. We only need to humble ourselves and appeal to him. And he will help us. The Lord indeed our shepherd. And therefore, we must not want and we must not be afraid. God's mercies are new every morning. Sometimes we go to bed at night and we worry and we stress about what tomorrow might hold. The truth is, we don't even know if we're going to be alive tomorrow. Yes, it's good to plan. It's good to plan. It's good to save. But at the end of it, we must always say, if the Lord wills. And once we are alive the next day, it means we have an opportunity. Sister Hazel, Donna, all of her opportunities have gone. As Chris said earlier, you and I who are alive, we have the opportunity to serve God and to put our trust in him. As far as we know, the dead can't repent. As far as, as we know, Hazel cannot hear one word that we say or sing today. And so we're reminded that funerals, the larger part, the most part of funerals are not for the dead, but for the living. And so I pray that the message in sermon and song and in the prayers would not fall on deaf ears. But all of us who are yet alive would use this as an opportunity to draw closer to God, to learn to trust him and to rely on his faithfulness. The best, most powerful human being can only do so much. But the God whom we serve, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is able to do infinitely more than we can ask or conceive. And that is why we can indeed say great is his faithfulness. We have experienced God's love even before we were born. As, as, as we heard on Sunday, in the reading from the prophet Jeremiah, God knew us even before we were conceived. And if God's love for us began even before we were born, even before this world was created, then we don't want any better assurance than that. That we can trust him. And what's furthermore, what's even more, that God's love for us will never end. Sometimes, you meet somebody and you promise to love them. And then something happens and you stop loving them. But not so with God. In spite of our sinfulness, in spite of our disobedience, God continues to love us and to shower us with his blessings. God is so good that he sends his blessings and the good, the bad, and the not so ugly. So why not trust him? Sometimes your friends and your family, they're not there for you. But God always have our back. And he have our front too. And so we must begin, if we haven't done so, we must begin to put our trust in God. The only person who cannot be mistaken or cannot fail. His steadfast love endures forever. 
And so today, as we say goodbye to our departed sister, let us do not grieve as others do who have no hope. Although we do not know what was in Donna's heart, Hazel, we know that if she died in Christ, then today is a good day for her. Or that, was it the 20... The 31st of January, sorry, it was the 31st. The 3rd of January when she died was a good day for her. Because it means that she no longer has to worry about pain, sickness, any disease. But she has gone to be with her God forever. And if you and I hold on to him, ride out this storm and all the other storms, if you and I serve him faithfully, knowing that he is faithful and that he will be with us to carry us to any difficulties, we will see Hazel again in that beautiful land where there is no more crying, no more pain or sorrow because the one who is faithful will wipe away every tear from our eyes and we'll see a new heaven and a new earth. And so today I encourage us to put your trust in God because his steadfast love never fails. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Amen. And so, let us with confidence and hope confess the faith in which we were baptized as we stand and say the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was dead. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the Holy Catholic forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Blessed be God our Father the creator and preserver of all life. Blessed be Jesus Christ, the savior and redeemer of humankind. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the enabler and sustainer of those who seek for grace. The Lord be with you. Let us continue in prayer. Grant us, Lord, the wisdom and the grace to use our right the time that is left to us here on earth. Lead us to repent of our sins the evil we have done and the good we have failed to do, and strengthen us to follow in the steps of your Son, in the way that leads to the fullness of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We may stand in for the offer him. And can it be?
up again. And can it be the first verse?
Please, please.
everyone the Father gives to me, will come to me. I will never turn away anyone who believes in me. You raise Jesus Christ from the dead. He will also give you life to our mortal bodies through his dwelling spirit. He will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. And in your right hand are pleasures. I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this. We are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Henceforth says the Lord, send the Spirit. They may rest from their labors, for they take with them the record of their deeds. Man born of a woman has but a short time to live. Like a flower, he blossoms and then withers. Like a shadow, he flees and never stays. In the midst of life, they are in death. To whom can we turn for help? But to you, Lord who are justly angered by our sins. I'm going to ask you to please be quiet, to give us a moment. I'm going to have a few minutes to get a chance to hear what you're going to join us in singing. Yeah, I can't hold you up. Please be quiet now. In true and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life, through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend you to Almighty God, our sister, Hazel Donna, and we commit your body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor, that when your well-beloved son shall come again in judgment, both this, our sister, Hazel Donna, and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Almighty God, we soon still live the spirit of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity. We give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now find rest and refreshment. May we and all who have died in the true faith of your holy name have perfect fulfillment and peace in your eternal and everlasting glory, to Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life, raise us, we humbly pray, from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that when we depart this life, we may rest in him, and at the resurrection receive that blessing which your well-beloved Son shall then pronounce. Come, you blessed of my Father, receive the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning of the world. Grant this, O merciful Father, to Jesus Christ, our Mediator and Redeemer. Amen. Grant to Lord, all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come, steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those, as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, Rest eternal grant of our Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. And may the Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face to shine upon her and be gracious to her. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon her and give her peace. Hallelujah, Christ is with me. The Lord is with me.
Hallelujah. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceedingly great joy. To the only wise God our Savior, the glory and the majesty, the dominion and the power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. We turn to the hymns at the graveside. And the first hymn at the graveside is Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a protest of glory. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, 
Thank you. 